Hi, in today's video I would like to show you how to turn something from this into something like this. Yeah, so I'm only going to use free plugins on this one um, or plugins that are included in Reaper. Anything you see today will be available in the download description below for free. Um, please also use the same stems as I am because ultimately that's the way you can compare um, sounds. Uh, because if you use your own stems, your own guitar, your own picking style, your own cable, your own interface, uh, that's just going to be very different. Um, so the first thing I do whenever I get the eye tracks, I group them. Um, in this case, I uh, have hard pan guitars left and right. I'm very much a friend of mixing guitars in stereo, so I only have to turn knobs once and it's half the CPU load. So it really makes sense to just have stereo plugins. Um, then I check the um, loudness or the levels of the DI tracks. Yeah, and in this case, something must have happened during tracking because one side of the guitar is very different. So the first and only thing I'm using on the DI tracks is a W1 limiter, which is a copy of the Waves L1, but for free. Um, and I'm not using it to compress my signal. I'm using it to get it at the same level. So this is how it sounds uh, with the uh, W1 engaged. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good signal to start with because it's the same um, volume, the same level. So you can actually uh, forget about working on automation and all that stuff. It's just the same. Um, then let's check out my guitar chain. Um, first of all, I'm using a gate. Um, this is already a very tight performance, but gates are still usable in this case if you have any unwanted noise. You can filter it out so it's um, a really fast gate. Uh, the next um, plugin I'm using is a Dr. Drive pedal, which is a copy of a Precision Drive. Um, I tried a few pedals here, um, but this one works just really well. It also comes in stereo, no questions asked. There is not a button to turn it from mono to stereo, which I love. Please, dear plugin makers of the world, just make them stereo by standard. Um, it also has an included gate uh, that I use because any drive pedal will introduce noise um, to your mix. So especially if you turn down uh, up the, the level and drive, you definitely introduce noise. So I'm using a gate that is just as um, gripping these uh, f um, f hissing noises and, and um, uh, won't let through the sounds that you don't want. Um, this pedal works really well. So if I turn it off, it sounds something like this. <laughs> And with it turned on, it sounds like this. Uh, as an amp simp, I'm using the Raven Volcanic. Uh, it's the free version, um, but it sounds really amazing and tight. Uh, I only turned down the gain on the lead channel and played a little bit with the EQ. Um, and also make sure to engage the stereo functionality or else your sound will be mono. Um, the next thing I'm using is the uh, Le Cab 2 by Poolin, which is, I think, 10 years old, but still works really well. Uh, and I use this because I like to mix different IRs. And you can have the left side and the right side. You see here, there's the input uh, and there's the panning. So I'm using the left input panned left and the right input panned right, which makes sense. Uh, and I'm trying to aim for two different sounds. Uh, one sound is uh, more uh, to the center of the speaker with high f presence. Uh, and the other one is the one that is farther away from the speaker and has more bass in it. So this is how my uh, sound is like. <laughs> This is the second sound that I'm using. Both have its place, but 
combining them together, I think that's the way to go. So both of them together sound something like this. <laughs> Um, if you don't like too much of one side, you can al always use the volume to blend in. Like if you want more bass, you blend in this IR. If you want more presence, you blend in the other one. Um, just make sure to use the same settings on s both sides because I think you can actually hear differences, especially in metal mixes. Um, so the next thing I'm using is an EQ with a high pass uh, at 85 hertz and a low pass at 8500 hertz. And I don't know why, but IRs, usually cabinets, uh, have two frequencies that are honky in the mix. And for some reason, I found them at 800 hertz and 3000 hertz. And I just used a narrow um, band um, filter to filter them out. So without the EQ, it sounds like this. <laughs> And with the EQ, it sounds like this. Um, yeah, the next one is a multi-band compressor, and I'm using it for two reasons. Uh, first of all, is to control the mutes. So the first three bands actually have the auto makeup gain disabled because it would add um, the frequencies you're compressing. Um, and it's just to keep the mutes down. And the fourth band I'm using for a little bit of a presence boost. Um, without introducing uh, fizzy high end. So here's the auto makeup uh, gain enabled. Um, this is how it sounds like without it. And this is with it. It's not too much, it's just controlling your um, mutes uh, to make it the same level. Um, and also I'm using a W1 limiter here uh, at roughly minus 10 dB. So you can still have some headroom for bass and drums in the mix. So yeah, that's my guitar mix. Um, let's jump over to the bass because I have something special to show you. Um, first of all, this is how, it's, uh, how the bass sounds DI. Th that's definitely a MIDI bass. So gin bass, um, zoom bass or trillion, I don't know. Um, I'm splitting them up in two different ones, so in, in a sub and a high distorted sound. Um, it, it's just a duplicate. Uh, let's focus on the sub first. Um, I'm using a low pass filter at 500 hertz, so anything below will be processed. Uh, and I'm using a dark glass um, impulse response. I'm using the Ignite IR loader because I only need one slot. Um, and this is how the low end sounds like. Yeah, it's just bass low end. Um, and let's jump on to the distorted sound. Uh, I'm using uh, anything above 500 and anything below 8000 hertz because I don't need high end fizzy bass sound. I'm also using the Greed Smasher, um, which is not a bass um, pedal by any means, but it works really well. Without the greed smash, it sounds something like this. And with it turned on. It's not too much distortion. I don't like heavy distorted bass, but it still needs some. Um, and I'm also using a dark glass impulse response with the Nadir. Um, but both together sound something like this. still not really glued together. So for that reason, I am using um, a multiband compressor again. And my favorite tool here is the Bass Professor Mark II um, that allows you to control different aspects of a bass sound, uh, such as sub bass, low bass, high bass, uh, presence and treble. And without it, it sounds something like this. And with it turned on, Yeah, I think that really works well because I also introduced some, um, I think it's, they call it dirt, but I think it's um, tube saturation. Um, and it just makes this really, really uh, sit well in the mix. And speaking of the mix, um, I'm also using a W1 limiter again. 
um, and how I define the levels is I mix with the drums enabled because I want the, the oops, sorry. Uh, I want the um, kick and the bass to really work well together. So this is how drums and bass sound together. So in this case, it's um, around minus 18 dB. So half of the guitars, but this is also because bass is always centered and guitars are panned. Um, just leave some room for the drums. Um, let's check out the drum bus, which is pre-rendered. Whoops. Um, this is how the drums sound like pre-rendered. And this is with my favorite um, plugin on drum basses. It's called the Head Crusher Free, uh, which has also kind of a saturation or a parallel um, compression. And you can also control the uh, crashes and the high frequencies, which I don't like on, on drums. So without it, it sounds like this. And with it turned on, Yeah, so that really works well. Um, and I'm also going to lightly talk about um, the mastering. Um, you could definitely use something like the GS Master Limiter. It just is a bit more of a pumping noise, uh, not noise, a pumping sound, but it doesn't really work well for me in this case. Um, but it's really close. There's really minor differences between these plugins. Um, let's hear it with the GS Master. Or you could use the Frontier, which has its own flavor. Um, I think I like this one the best out of all of them, but um, for this mix, I think um, I need a transparent one and not something that flavors it, but you can listen to it. Yeah, and this is with the Loud Max, uh, which is the most transparent one that I usually have on the mix. And something you should learn um, about also is the loudness meter by Yulin. Um, if you want to have your mix sound huge on all streaming platforms, um, use something like this. Uh, I'm aiming for roughly minus nine, mi minus nine luffs. Um, this is SoundCloud standard, I guess. Um, YouTube and Spotify have different luff ratings. I think minus 13 and minus 15. Um, but if you go any louder than this, uh, your mix will sound compressed and even quieter, I guess. Not, not really as, as full and, and thick as um, thick with spelled with two Cs. Um, uh, as other mixes. So I'm aiming at minus nine luffs. So let's check my current mix. Yeah, makes sense to use this tool to measure it. Um, yeah, that was my run through of how I mix uh, guitars in bass and drums uh, in Reaper. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you don't want this kind of content here, also let me know because it's really much work to get this video done. Um, yeah, and thank you for watching. Hope I could get you interested in mixing with free uh, plugins and bye bye.